Have you ever stolen something that didn't belong to you? Or have you tried lying to your parents about something really important? If so, did you feel proud of doing it? I'm pretty sure the answer is a no. But the question is, why? What was it about doing something wrong that makes you feel bad deep inside? According to Aquinas, being morally upright is very important and is a vital part of God's purpose for humans. But not everyone knows about the Bible or had even heard about God. If so, how can people follow God's rules about morality or even know His commandments when they don't even know Him? And that led Aquinas to theorize that God made us with the right tools to meet His expectations. God made humans good by nature. And this idea became known as the natural law theory. Italian philosopher Thomas Aquinas was known as the doctor of the church due to his immense contribution to theology and Catholic church doctrine. According to him, reason and goodness were naturally embedded in all men to guide them in living their lives. These inherited rules essentially differentiate between what is good and what is bad. Morality. Under natural law, everyone has the same rights, such as the right to life, and the right to happiness, for the reason that goodness exists. Now, we humans all want things, especially good things. And God created us with an inclination and a desire to seek for those. Now these things we are inclined to seek are known as the basic goods, and there are seven of them. According to natural law theory, the basic goods are inherent in human nature and provide the foundation for moral and ethical decision-making. First, we have life. It is the most basic and fundamental of all the goods. Without life, none of the other goods can be pursued or enjoyed. We humans have the natural desire to live, to survive. The next basic good is making more life which is reproduction. It's necessary for the continuation of the human species. Individuals have a right to pursue this good within the context of a committed relationship. A couple marries each other and then produce a child. After reproducing and making an offspring, the third basic good will be educating one's offspring. Educating one's offspring is a critical aspect of parenting and plays a vital role in a child's overall development and success in life. Education provides knowledge, skills, and values needed to become productive and responsible. The first three goods are applicable to all living things. However, due to the way God created us, Aquinas classified goods that are particular to humans. And that leads us to our fourth basic good, which is seeking God. It is a spiritual practice that involves searching for a deeper understanding of the divine and connecting with a higher power. Even John Paul Starte, even though being an atheist, said, and I quote, We're all born with God-shaped hole inside of us. Now for our next basic good, quoting Aristotle for his words, Man is by nature a social animal. Which is why our fifth basic good is to live in society. It is a fundamental aspect of human life, as we are social creatures who thrive on connection, cooperation, and collaboration, and to contribute to the well-being of the community as a whole. And leading up to that is our sixth basic good which is avoiding offense. Since we are social beings that wants to feel like we belong and we want to make connections, we may feel shame and guilt when we offend other people. And that is why we try to avoid it. And last but not least, our seventh basic good, which is to shun ignorance. We humans want to be right and we want to know what is right and true. That is why we value knowledge and why we shun ignorance. 
it is also an important step towards personal growth and enlightenment. And from these seven basic goods corresponds a prohibition and a positive injunction. An example for that is the prohibition do not kill, which gives us the positive injunction that encourages us to promote life, and that leads us to valuing our life and the life of others, which is why we care for the sick and why we want to live a healthy lifestyle. And this can also be applied to other basic goods. But then, if humans were naturally good, and despite being designed to seek what is good, why do they violate the natural law? Why do others kill and take lives? Why are there people offending other people? And many more questions. Well, Aquinas has two answers for that, which is ignorance and emotions. Firstly, ignorance. People who lack knowledge or understanding of natural laws may inadvertently violate them. Ignorance blinded us to the bad things we did just to get the good things we wanted because we didn't know what and who was affecting what we just did. Simply because we want to be right and do not want to learn more. For example, someone might use a pesticide that harms beneficial insects, not realizing it disrupts the ecosystem. Now following Aristotle's philosophy, he believed humans are rational beings capable of reason and logical thinking. However, he also recognized that humans are emotional beings and that emotions can sometimes overpower sense. Which is the second answer? Aquinas believed emotions are natural and necessary for human beings, but they can become problematic and so they may be adequately balanced and regulated by reason. For example, excessive anger can lead a person to act impulsively and irrationally, while extreme love or desire can cloud their judgment and cause them to make poor decisions. In Aquinas' view, reason should be used to control and regulate emotions so they do not lead to irrational behavior. He believed that cultivating virtues such as self-control and prudence could help individuals achieve this balance between reason and emotion. Now how does the natural law view taxation? Taxation is the practice of levying a financial charge to fund public goods and services. Individuals and businesses are typically taxed on their earnings, profits, or transactions. Natural law and taxation holds that certain moral principles that are inherent in human nature and should guide our actions. One of these principles is the promotion of the common good, which is the well-being of all members of society such as social welfare programs. However, natural law recognizes that taxation has limitations. Taxes should not be excessive or burdensome, and they should not be used to unfairly redistribute wealth. Governments must ensure that taxation is fair and equitable, and that the benefits of public goods and services are distributed justly and reasonably. So now that we've covered the concepts and ideas in taxation and natural law, let's try to identify some social and bioethical issues and relate them to natural law. Number 1. Abortion By the theory of natural law, Abortion can never be permitted, as it is fundamentally immoral to kill an unborn child as an innocent human being. Aborting the child also affects the injunction of life because natural law promotes life and procreation, which is the opposite of abortion. Number 2. Euthanasia According to the natural law perspective, Euthanasia is always immoral since it entails purposely ending a human being's life, which goes against the idea of the sanctity of life. This point of view holds that a person's life is intrinsically important and ought to be preserved and that taking someone's life purposely is always wrong. A person's capacity for reasoning and decision-making is prematurely terminated by taking its life, 
therefore violates the natural law norm of promoting life about positive injunctions. Number 3. Divorce In natural law, marriage is a moral and spiritual relationship between a man and a woman that is founded on their inherent complementarity and the possibility of procreation. Hence why it is viewed as a disruption of the natural order of human relationships and a violation of the eternal commitment necessary in marriage. Divorce also violates the natural law principle that upholds the integrity of marriage and the family unit, which is the base unit of society. Number 4. Same-Sex Marriage same-sex marriage is wrong under the natural law, affecting the basic good of reproduction and affecting its positive injunction which is procreation. The male and female human bodies complement one another sexually and have the ability to generate human life. While well, some believe that same-sex relationships are immoral, other believe that love and commitment between two consenting adults, regardless of gender or sexual orientation, should be celebrated and supported. So, now that we know about the natural theory, and some people may agree on Aquinas for it, other people may not. After all, it might not sound appealing to anybody who doesn't believe in God. That is why the natural law theory has its fair share of critics. Which might be why the 18th century German philosopher Immanuel Kant brought up his own philosophy, the Kantian ethics which is something that needs another video for its own. But until then, stay tuned!